I'm here in Medjugorje and I'm this, what's your name? Seamus Farn is my name. Where are you from? I'm from Gorn in County Kilkenny, Ireland. In Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. How often have you been in Medjugorje? Uh, many, many times in the past, mm -hmm. with a lapse of about, I don't know, 10, 15 years when mm -hmm. I couldn't come because of health issues. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, Eugene, my friend, brought me out this time. You know, mm -hmm. he asked, invited me out, so oh, I decided to come, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So Welcome back. I've come back and I'm enjoying every bit of it, yeah. Wow, it's I really see it in your eyes, yeah. I see it in your eyes. Yeah. And when did you hear the first time about Medjugorje? What did you think at the time when you heard, when you heard about Medjugorje? I, I thought many different thing, thoughts about it, but I said, on my spirit, I felt that this is really genuine. This mm -hmm. is really true, really right, you know. So mm -hmm. um, I asked Our Lady to bring me to Medjugorje. Mm -hmm. But because I had started in my ministry and was living by providence, you know, living on faith, mm -hmm. I didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. So um, I asked Our Lady to bring me to Medjugorje, that I'd love to go there. Mm -hmm. And knowing that if she did, mm -hmm. it would be, you know, in another way, proving to me it was authentic. Yeah. And some days, uh, three weeks later, mm -hmm. an envelope came through my door with a ticket from Medjugorje, ticket from Medjugorje plus 300 pounds at that time. Spending money, unbelievable. That was a lot of money back then, mm -hmm. back, the back in 1984, you know, back then. Wow, unbelievable. That's yeah. supervision, uh, how do you say, provision by God? Uh, no? Provision by God, yeah. yeah. And the Lord has provided for me during my ministry all my life. I've mm -hmm. never had to ask. Mm -hmm. it's always can been you, can you describe that, that, that a bit? How does the supernatural provision by God come? Exactly, yeah. I would not know mm -hmm. where it's going to come from, but mm -hmm. uh, it always came. The Lord always provided me with the money for my ministry, mm -hmm. um, the money to support my family, rear my family, you mm -hmm. know, educate them. Mm -hmm. The Lord always looked after me, always provided for me. He never so let me down. The Bible is right if you work for the kingdom everything is given to you correct mm -hmm. absolutely i know that i live by that you know <coughs> and people even coming out here mm -hmm. um eugene um asked me if i'd like to come out and i said uh, eugene keely my friend here and they said um, um yeah but how much is that going to cost so don't worry about that him he was bringing me out the lord through provide. eugene provided for me again. Um, and how beautiful yeah and and how is your experience in medjugorje all this time? Um, all this time, well, since I came, it's only what, last night or um, Friday night, you mm -hmm. know, Saturday morning, mm -hmm. and um, I've been tired, so rested, but I came, to, got up, had my breakfast, came down to Mass eventually, mm -hmm. got up around half seven, had my breakfast around half seven. And you're already energized. Uh, you? Yeah, and I came down to the 10 o'clock, Eugene brought me down to the 10 o'clock Mass because the whole place had changed so drastically, mm -hmm. it was very built up since I was here last, you know. Mm -hmm. So he brought me down to the Mass and um, it was just a beautiful experience. I felt kind of quite emotional mm -hmm. back here to be again. Back, yeah, 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 exactly. Welcome back, sir. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, yeah. so when you came before, you came a lot of times before. About nine times. Nine times. Really. Yes, yeah. But why, why do you come back all the time to Medjugorje? I just felt, uh, thank you very much, I felt drawn mm -hmm. uh, to um, mm -hmm. doing that. You know, yeah. I felt our lady calling me back. Mm -hmm. And. Um, Yet, for many years, I could not really get myself down to saying the rosary, mm -hmm. even though I was in a ministry and in prayer and all of that. Mm -hmm. And every, around five, half five of, um, I, I forget what evening of the week it was back many years ago, mm -hmm. um, we used to have adoration in the, our local parish church. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, anyway, I did did my hour of adoration, mm -hmm. which I sat there looking at the watch on it, and would it ever be over? I know I was committed to the hour, mm -hmm. and I couldn't say the rosary, I couldn't pray, I don't know, I was just in a bad mood or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I knelt down like a hypocrite mm -hmm. um, near the end of that hour mm -hmm. to pretend I was finishing off my prayers. Mm -hmm. And then I got out, and the only honest thing I did was a double genuflection in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Mm -hmm. And then, um, this lady spoke to me and I said, that couldn't be her, could it? Could mm -hmm. Our lady spoke to me mm -hmm. and she said, say my rosary. Mm -hmm. I said, well, but I wasn't sure, was it her, was whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was halfway up uh, off my knees and she said, say my rosary. Mm -hmm. And then when I was fully standing up with the intention of moving out, she said, say my rosary. Mm -hmm. A and I crawled enough. back into the seat again, and where the next hour and a half went, Our Lady gave me the most beautiful sort of ecstasy of time that I've never experienced before, until Mass time. 
Mm -hmm. I went through the Mass. Mm -hmm. She just lifted me up and I promised her I would never, ever not say her rosary. Every day I would say her rosary, which I do. And what is the beauty about the rosary brand? It's the beauty of living the whole life of Christ, ministry of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, it's totally scripture. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're living the whole, that togetherness with Mary, what she went through with him, you know. Mm -hmm. And where she's trying to actually remind us. Mm -hmm. She's trying to get us to really focus, try and take our time. Mm -hmm. Don't just, you know, not, mm -hmm. just take our time, reflect on the mystery, reflect on what's happening, reflect mm -hmm. on the Annunciation, what was involved there. Mm -hmm. Here is a young woman, mm -hmm. spoken to by the angel Gabriel, mm -hmm. and she in faith accepted what the, and she said, be it done unto me according to my word. And then, as I went on in my ministry, mm -hmm. I realized the Lord was using me in, in deliverance work as well as healing people, being healed of their cancers, of their everything. Mm -hmm. And then, Lord, I didn't know what, and she said, I should take Our Lady's example and just say, Lord, be done unto me according That's to your wish. word. That's your wish, right? yeah. And um, you talk a lot of people, I see it here in Medjugorje, they, they, they search for healing, you know. What yes. would you give them? If you, you said you have a mystery of healing. A ministry of healing, yes. And yeah. What would you give them as an advice, you know? Um, the, the first advice would be, the, the first entree to healing would be forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Because in Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, Jesus said, if anybody should say to this mountain, mm -hmm. this cancer, this financial problem, this relationship problem, this whatever problem, mm -hmm. to be taken up and cast into the sea, mm -hmm. and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. And I know it, I see it happening every day. Mm -hmm. Then he says, when you pray and ask for something, believe mm -hmm. that you have already received it. Mm -hmm. And it will, not it might be or maybe, but it will be given to you. Mm -hmm. And then he said, before you come and ask me for anything, if there's anything or anybody out there you need to forgive, he puts it in different translations, different things. But if there's anybody out there you need to forgive, you must forgive that person first. Or be at least willing to forgive, wanting to forgive. Beautiful. And Jesus will always. Like a poor man came, he had bad Parkinson's back a few weeks ago. His hands were shaking all over the place. He was riddled with cancer, his late 50s, early 60s. Mm -hmm. And um, we spoke about the Lord, and he really didn't have any great connection with the Lord, but I showed that Jesus, I said, faith in Jesus Christ helps us to reach beyond the limitations of man and medicine and science into the unlimited possibilities of the divine. How beautiful. And, um, and then, yeah? when I was praying with him, prayed through his memories, brought him to the Lord, brought him to me. When I prayed with him, I was praying the physical things out of him, and his, his Parkinson's stopped straight away. When they took him to the hospital, then a fortnight later, there was no cancer bar, tiny trace in his liver. Mm -hmm. That's how Jesus healed him. The, That's how makes the, the Lord impossible. totally, yeah. The even little children dying of lack of leukemia. Mm -hmm. The Lord showed me if I prayed through the memories, it's all to do with memory. Everything yes. goes back to the memories. Everything. Mm -hmm. Every sickness, every illness, everything goes back to the memories. So the Lord would have shown me when I started that I would need to heal the memories first mm -hmm. before I tried to heal the physical body. If I can heal the memories, it's very seldom we ever lose even a terminally ill cancer patient. How do you do that? I mean, I see, you know, um, people like Jim Brown, he said he was spoken into by his father, you are worse, nothing, you can do nothing, yes. by a lot of other people. And he said it's a long journey. to. No, I would say, yeah, but I, what I would do then, what the Lord showed me to do mm -hmm. would be if somebody said that, I would say, close your eyes, feel the heart of that, and I would touch and heal that heart, and the Lord heals it instantly, mm -hmm. and allows the person to be as if it was never said to them. Mm -hmm. If somebody's being raped or abused, pray healing and ask them to close their eyes, go back for a second, heal that memory, the Lord heals it instantly, and allows them to be as if it never happened. How beautiful. The Lord, James Bond couldn't heal a paper bag. No, no, it's the Lord. With Jesus heals, yeah. Yeah. And that's what he does. And there are a lot of people out there in the world, you know, they, they want to have nothing to do with God, God the Father. Can you describe the beauty of God the Father for the people? The beauty of God the Father is, if they understood what love was, they might get some idea of what, who God the Father is. 
is the most loving father that they have to open up and relate to and if they do he's just waiting there for God's sake he's saying please ask me I can't enter I've given you free will I can't enter your lives Mm -hmm. without you actually inviting me in there Mm -hmm. but please turn to me ask me I will do anything for you I love you I gave you my son Jesus I let him even die suffer and die for you that pained me as much as it pains me to see you suffer Come to me for heaven's sake and I will love you and heal you and make you well again, make you whole again. And every time you suffer, just offer that suffering up for some holy soul. But come to me, I will I'll help you. Come to me all you who labour and are heavenly burdened and I will give you rest. So beautiful. Yeah. Do you have a favourite saint? St. Gemma, uh, Gemma Galgani from yeah. Italy. She's, uh, we have opened a healing centre. Yeah. Uh, in um, um, below in Steve County Kilkenny, uh-huh. many people wouldn't know her. That is, but the mm-hmm. ones that want us, they know her. Why do you like her so much? Yeah. Why do you like her so much? She helped me. I knew nothing about her, very little about her. And ten days beforehand, I heard about this Saint Gemma. That she was very powerful mm-hmm. in deliverance ministry. Mm-hmm. She died at 25 years of age from Luca in Italy. She was a beautiful little thing, mm-hmm. great little saint. But anyway, yeah. And what would you tell people like? Um, at the end of the interview, what is so special about Medjugorje? Why should they come here at least one time? Because this is a very special place where Our Lady really does come. Mm-hmm. She's doing her best through the wonderful messages that come here all the time. You know that she delivers all the time mm-hmm. to save mankind, to turn them back to her son, mm-hmm. to save them from the awful uh, horrors that are ahead of us if we don't. Mm-hmm. And prophecy is very dependent on that. Mm-hmm. Like back when this uh, they brought in this um, abortion thing, and uh, we'd say at home in Ireland, when they won mm-hmm. the abortion, Our Lady or the Lord spoke to me and said that it won't be long now until we will see a natural disaster of a kind never witnessed before. Mm-hmm. And on came your uh, COVID 19 and all these vaccines, and that, mm-hmm. which um, really created tremendous suffering and hardship on people. Mm-hmm. And then the Lord spoke the same night and he said, if people do not come back to him and get their act together, they will then, four years from that point, which is this year, to then experience a natural disaster, mm-hmm. which would be, which would make what we've been through like a walk in the park. Mm-hmm. So we need to come back to the Lord, but the provision is always if people come back to the Lord, we will avert the disaster. Thank you so much for this beautiful interview. Thank you very much.